Do you ever wish you were further ahead by now in your life or career? Maybe have a relationship or a better relationship, a higher position or more savings. I see you nodding. I hear you. I visualized about getting into university and then my dream job and after that my business. And it worked. I came to believe that a clear vision is the first step to any accomplishment. Until one day, I realized that some of my goals were getting in the way of the life I wanted. I'm at the beach with my kids and husband. We've been planning this holiday for months, and I've been looking forward to spending quality time with my family. My son is learning to swim, and he's squealing with delight. It's beautiful. Something's wrong. I'm not enjoying the moment fully. I find a quiet place to journal, to figure out what's going on with me. And then I remember. This morning, I saw on social media a fellow expert in my industry celebrating a huge financial milestone. I'm happy for them. And for the evidence that huge success in my industry is possible, still, I can't help feeling disappointed that my business is not further ahead. Why am I feeling like this when I'm in such a great holiday? Would more money change my experience? The beach would not be more beautiful. My kids' faces would not be any cuter. And then it dawns on me. What I really want is not the money. It's the self-esteem that would come from achieving that milestone as an entrepreneur. My life has never been the same since that day at the beach. We often feel good about ourselves only if something else happens first. It could be wealth, job titles, business growth, ideal weight, social media followers, or relationship status. When we were babies, we didn't need to do anything to deserve love. Everybody sees babies as worthy. Unfortunately, as we grow up, often society teaches us that our worth is conditional. And we get trapped pursuing the wrong goals in an effort to boost our self-esteem and through that our self-worth. We follow ego instead of joy. As an executive coach, I work with leaders to clarify what they want in their life, business, or career. We're all busy, and it's hard to find the time to pause and reflect on what really matters to us. We get bombarded by messages about what we should want, often by people who want to sell us something. Back at the beach, I realized I was making a fundamental goal-setting mistake. I was pursuing a goal, the growth of my business, out of ego and not out of joy. What's the difference? Well, if you want a promotion because you would love to do the job, it is a joy-driven goal. If you want the promotion to feel worthy or to impress others, it is an ego-driven goal. But so what, right? What's wrong with pursuing a goal out of ego? 
Here are three reasons why ego-driven goals don't work. First, ego-driven goals can lead to underperformance. Researchers found that the more students based their self-worth on academic results, the worse they performed on ability diagnostic tests. Their anxiety got in their way. It's easier to understand this if you think about dating. Imagine you're single, and someone wants to date you because they need the validation of having a relationship. They want to prove to themselves and others that they are cool. Now imagine a different person who wants to date you because they'd love to spend some time together. They feel good on their own, and they'll also like to spend time with you. Who would you choose? I bet you would not choose the needy person. We become needy when we pursue goals for the sake of validation, and that leads to underperformance in dating and business alike. But when we do it from a place of joy, we're more relaxed and magnetic employers, clients, investors, and even potential dating partners are more attracted to us, and opportunities start flowing our way. The second reason ego-driven goals don't work is their heavy, long-term emotional cost. Seeking to validate our self-worth with external achievements has been linked to depressive symptoms. You might feel good temporarily when you achieve an ego-driven goal, but the next moment you replace it with another goal. We get trapped in a perennial, I'll be happy in the future mindset. Our life slips away in a feeling of not yet or not enough. You can recognize an ego-driven goal if you feel shame for not having achieved it already, or fear that you might never achieve it. If you're thinking about how your classmates will react when they find out about it at the school reunion, well, that's a good sign it's an ego-driven goal. I've seen clients devastated when they fail in an ego-driven pursuit because they had based their whole self-esteem on succeeding. All this emotional turmoil is unnecessary. Once we cover our physical needs, we can engage with work like children engage with play. When my son is building a volcano in the sand, he's simply doing what feels good. He will tirelessly carry the water from the sea. He will lose track of time, crafting the shape just right. We're naturally creative beings. We love solving problems and overcoming obstacles. When we feel good within ourselves, we will instinctively do work that feels good and does good in the world. The third reason ego-driven goals don't work is that they distract us from what we really want. When we chase self-esteem on the outside, we're like the dog chasing its tail. The dog never reaches its tail because it was part of its body all along. The dog could be pursuing something more fun like food or doggy friends. We already have worth, like the dog already has a tail. No need to chase it. We can pursue something more fun instead, like personal growth, amazing experiences, or deep relationships. How do you do that? To begin with, you start with how you want to feel. 
For most of us, it is joy, love, inspiration, peace. We want to jump out of bed in the morning, excited about the day ahead. We want to feel alive. The biggest obstacle for most of us to accessing those feelings is not external circumstances. But our compulsive thinking and limiting beliefs, including the one that says that our worth is conditional. Use whichever method works for you to clean up this inner clutter. Meditation, therapy, coaching, sports, journaling, breath work, or something else. Behind the emotional roller coaster of our everyday lives, there is an inner space of peace and well being. Access that space, even for a few seconds. And from that place of peace and well being, listen to your inner wisdom. Is there something you'd like to do? Is there an action that feels like an expression of your joy, love, and creativity? If so, then go and do that. And once you're already doing something you're enjoying, then you can add goals to it if you want. Just like my son building the volcano in the sand, can feel an inspiration to make it taller. The goal should not be there to add a feeling of stress and lack, but to add excitement to your joy. You want to avoid ego-driven goals. As we have established, they lead to underperformance, misery, and distraction from what you really want. How do you eliminate those? Let's do it together. I'd like you to think of something you want. It could be personal or professional. You got it? Ready? Now I want, to, I want you to ask yourself these three questions. One, how does this goal make me feel? Shame for not having achieved it already? Sadness that someone else is ahead of you? Fear that you may never achieve it? Or is it excitement? Would you still want this goal if nobody could ever find out you achieved it? That's a good sign of whether you want this for yourself or for other people's opinions. Three. Does your goal include the word best in it? Do you want to be the best? as what you do? Or you want to be a master of your craft? The first goal locks you into the misery of comparison, while the second opens you up to the joy of constant evolution. Successful competitive athletes don't visualize about the medal. They visualize about playing a great game. If you want to have goals, have goals that make you feel good. The ones that would still be worth it, even if nobody would ever find out you achieved them. The ones that do not require other people to be worse than you, so that you can be the best, but lift others up along with you. Back at the beach, I realized I didn't need to achieve certain goals to be worthy. 
my worth, like your worth, is unconditional. I started following joy. I wanted 12 weeks of holiday a year to travel. I wanted fewer meetings and more time to write. I wanted to share with my community whatever my heart desired. I started doing all that. And my business started performing better than ever. Imagine a world where people felt free to pursue the activities that set their soul on fire. Instead of being trapped on a treadmill, forever pursuing external achievements to heal their inner insecurity. Imagine if we did not feel we should be further ahead by now. And we could simply lose track of time doing something we enjoy. Because once you already feel worthy enough and whole, all there's left to do is go out and play. Not out of ego, but out of joy. Thank you.